in high school it's possible that you became comfortable with writing essays because you knew that you had a limited audience, specifically your teacher. You knew that your teacher's eyes were the only ones that would see it and because of that your essay might have taken on the tone of a letter or a journal entry. But if your essay is an argument, a letter or a journal entry won't work. The audience of an essay is not the teacher. The teacher grades it, but that's not who you should sound like you're writing to. Considering the teacher to be the only audience usually results in leaving out information that should be included because you assume the teacher already knows it. Or it causes you to use ridiculously big words that you barely even know the meaning of, which really makes the essay sound silly instead of intelligent. Most professors recommend that you consider your audience to be your peers, so college students like yourself, but ones that are not in the same class. This will help you use the appropriate tone and include the appropriate information. We're going to discuss a couple of ways to visualize your audience as well as imagine what the audience might be thinking as they read your essay. Have you ever been told that you could argue with a brick wall? If so, maybe you feel confident that you can handle this type of writing. It is kind of like arguing with a brick wall, right? You don't get any verbal or visual feedback from the op opponent while you make your case, but you have to keep trying to be as convincing as possible anyway. The main thing to remember in this scenario, though, is that sometimes when parents say, you could argue with a brick wall, they were referring to the stubborn attitude rather than the ability to be convincing. What you do not want to do is simply repeat your position over and over. You need to constantly prove and explain your claims to win. Maybe the better accusation would be one who could sell ice to the Eskimos. Was that you, too? Let's see whether or not you really can. But since you're not getting that visual and verbal feedback, what you really need to be considering is what is that brick wall type reader thinking? Because what they're thinking is what decides whether or not you win. This is the first thing I want you to imagine your reader to be thinking. I don't care how well written your thesis is, your introduction, whatever, the first response they're going to have is, huh? because that will let you know that you're going to have to explain yourself better. As you try to explain yourself better, their next reaction is, no, they disagree with you. If you're writing to your fans, you don't have to work very hard, do you? If, if a die-hard Republican is talking to a die-hard Republican, they don't have to try very hard to be convincing. But if a die-hard Republican is talking to a die-hard Democrat, they have to try a lot harder. You need to put effort into this argument. So you're always going to be talking to someone who disagrees with you. You probably know people who just love to disagree, who it doesn't matter if you are talking about the sky being blue, they'll swear it's not. If you say the sun comes up in the east, they'll say it comes up in the west. Just because they want to argue. You might imagine writing the paper to that person they're gonna be really difficult to convince whoever you're imagining they're going to disagree with you first huh and then no so you work harder and harder and you present the best case that you can and the next response is hmm they're not gonna suddenly change their mind this is an argument you have to convince them so the best you're going to go from that no is, hmm, so, all right, they'll, they're considering something you said, but they're very skeptical. They're not sure at all. And the best you're likely to get even in the end is, I'll think about it. But that is a victory. Trying to get someone who is completely against what you're saying to at least think about it to consider that you might be right, that is a win. But it's not a total win. You had to work really hard to get them to even think about it. Now remember, in your conclusion, you have to get them to keep thinking about it. If you just drop off in your conclusion, 
you're, you're done, they're done, they're not going to think about it anymore. If you have a one or two line conclusion that gives nothing for them to keep thinking about, you're not going to win that argument. So the conclusion is very important. By the end, you're trying to finally get that last bit in that will cause them to keep thinking about it. Now some of you have never been told that you could argue with a brick wall or sell ice to the Eskimos, and that's fine. But you have still tried to convince somebody of something at some point, probably lots of times. Maybe it would help you to instead imagine yourself talking to someone on the phone, but the person you're talking to isn't really great about giving a lot of feedback. They're good at letting you know that they agree or disagree, but they don't say a whole lot. So you can tell that they're not agreeing and that you have to work harder, but you don't get to see their face. You don't get that body language and you don't get very much uh, auditory feedback either. So think about talking on that phone if you need to. So these are the things that I want you to remember from this essay. One, your essay is not part of your diary. You are not writing a journal entry. Imagine yourself trying to get this published in a journal or magazine. Maybe that seems like a lofty goal for you, but if you at least try to make it that good, then it's going to be a lot better than it would have been. Second, your audience is not made up of fans. You're convincing the enemy. It's an argument. And that takes us to the third one. Because of that, you have to work to be convincing. You can't just state your idea and, accept, and expect people to accept it. You have to work.